the entrances to the Manchester City theme song. One of the few luxuries in Hans life is that he has a hospitality box at his beloved main road. Well, we said when he started out, if you want a nickname like the Hitman, which Thomas Hearns had, you'd better be good. He's proved up to it so far. Yep, he's done everything that's been asked to him. He's come through a few scares with cuts, but he's doing it all. And the only fighter, I think, that can get this sort of crowd to come to a place like this really is a great buzz about Ricky Hand and what he does in the ring. come to see that's what he brings to the ring Pantu grew up idolizing the great Roberto Duran like him he is a wicked body puncher he hasn't of course reached that kind of level yet indeed quite a lot of independent assessors don't really think he's in the world top 10 yet I think tonight is the litmus test. If he wins this and wins this well, I think he convinces a lot more people and the story goes ever onwards and upwards. But yeah. it's an if, isn't it? it? It is an if. It should be a tough fight, but this will really put him up to the next level. This is the fight that he needs to really prove himself. Tail of the tape for tonight's big fight and a real big fight atmosphere too in Manchester. Hatton, still only 23, McGee seven years older. We're waiting a long time for this. McGee is taller, has a reach advantage. He could make that count. That was half a pound heavier. Both inside the 10 stone, like welterweight limit. Pat the pro for five years and McGee for seven. A lower profile career for McGee. Something maybe that that burns a little. He's seen Hatton get all the publicity. McGee's popped a few more rounds. Hatton the better stoppage rate, though they're both very notable punches. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening once more and welcome to the magnificent NEN Arena here in the city of Manchester, England. Tonight, Frank Warren Sports Network in association with our main sponsors, Red Square, the drink that packs a punch, and the Vaughan Group proudly present 12 three-minute rounds for the WBU Light Welterweight Championship of the World. We'd like to welcome our viewers watching live and exclusively on Sky Sports and Showtime. The officials have been appointed by the World Boxing Union in association with the British Boxing Board of Control. WBU President of Ringside is Mr. Joe Robinson. Commissioner from Johannesburg in South Africa is Mr. Wally Solomon. British Boxing Board of Control Steward in Charge is Mr. Dennis Lockton. Timekeeper at the bell from Halifax in England is Mr. Colin Roberts. We have three scoring judges at ringside who are Des Bloy from Australia, Glenn Feldman from the United States of America, and Howard Goldberg from South Africa. Finally, when the action commences, the referee this evening, taking part in his 99th world title contest, is the one, the only, Mr. Mickey Van from Leeds, England. All right, my fans, here we go. The time has come for the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBU Light Welterweight Champion. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Manchester, England, it is showtime!
Introducing to you firstly, boxing out of the red corner, wearing his familiar green, white, and orange colored shorts. At the way on scale, 9 stone, 13 and 1 quarter pounds. Or 139 and 1 quarter US pounds. He has an outstanding record. 25 contests, 23 wins. 18 of those wins coming by way of knockout with only the two defeats. He comes to the ring this evening as the former undefeated light welterweight champion of the Commonwealth and is the challenger for the championship from Belfast in Northern Ireland, presenting Eamon Mackey. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing his familiar silver, blue and black coloured shorts. At the way he scales, He has a perfect, undefeated record. 28 contests, 28 wins. 23 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former undefeated light welterweight champion of Great Britain. Tonight, making the sixth defense of his championship, Manchester England. The referee, Mr. Mickey Van, will now give his final instructions to both boxers. OK, Eamon. OK, Ricky. You both have your instructions in the dressing room. I made my commands at all times. Don't forget, I want no law is with the head. Shake hands. Shake hands. That's it, guys. Mickey Van, by the way, is refereeing a Hatton fight for the seventh time in a row. Now, that does seem wrong, with all due respect to the excellent Mr. Van. Maybe something the WBU need to have a little look at. Now then, can McGee cope with Hatton's ferocious body punching? Few others have. Can Hatton cope with McGee's precise counter punching? How gung ho will he be about it? Plenty of words swapped over the last couple of years between these two. Though not too many this week. They've had good respect for each other. Both have prepared precisely and fanatically. Tempo might be a big thing in this fight as well. Hatton is a fast-paced fighter. Sometimes McGee has liked to take breaks. McGee does have a very good win, albeit a contentious one, over Shea Neary. Hatton tries to play him, he's caught that account to McGee! for McGee and what a lift Hatton diving in rushed it a little and he was picked off by a wonderful shot well, he has to, to, yep he has to take his time he's rushing in he's too eager to get close to McGee McGee good speed got that counter in with terrific hand speed now that's really going to make Ricky Hatton think his head looks clear enough but there's a sign of the danger. But he's going to have to be cute. Can't come in in straight lines. McGee apparently has looked absolutely awesome in his sparring for this fight. Some say he knocked out Maxime Nestorenko, former European champion. There's the body shots, in and out tactics by McGee. He doesn't want to hang around in there, waiting for a counter. Take that, he says. This is the comeback from Hatton. Yeah, that's what he needs to do, he needs to come straight back, just take the play back away from McGee. But he's got to keep that left hand up, always been a defensive problem for Hatton. Yes, he has been quite easy to hit in his career. He's always realised he'd have to take a few. It's just part of his style, it's almost a kind of Manchester Mexican style, to coin a phrase. There's the Hatton body shots again. McGee very anxious not to hang around on those ropes 
He says that Hatton has been beating blown up lightweights and old men. Tonight he'll be in a rear fight, real fight. We've had an early sign of that again. He just looked a bit open, Hatton. Yep, just taking a little while to get used to the southpaw stance. Fire and brimstone already. German did it in the amateurs. Completely. Yeah. Right, I told you. We don't have to get anything just yet. We got this. Well, that was not if part of the plan win. for Ricky Hatton tonight, win. though. He knew there was a danger of it happening, all right. Yeah. He just Jim rushed Jim in a little bit too Jim eager, Jim too Jim early Jim to hit the penalty. Leaves himself open, trying to go for the left hook to the body, and then a sharp counter with that right hand puts him down for the first time in his professional career. Significantly, not the left, the right. Yep, well, it is Hatton's left hand that does come down. Look at it. He's going for his left hook, doubling it up, and then it's that right-hand counter that gives them the problem. Undoubtedly something they will have worked on in the sparring because Hatton has looked open to right hands in his career. Well, you know what the song says? Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. And that's what Hatton mustn't be doing rushing in terrific start for McGee but here comes more Ricky Hatton pressure trying to deny McGee room to work some good overcuts and hooks to the body there from Hatton oh great right hand from Hatton there seven years the younger man there's two contrasting characters in this excellent light welterweight division Lots of other talent around on the world scene too. Right up a cut from McGee. Good work from McGee. Uh, Hatton rather close in and then skips away again. That's what he's got to be looking to do. Nice long right hand from Hatton. He's got to get plenty of angles, plenty of lateral movement in and out of range. He's getting there with some of these body shots. Hatton, it's vicious, violent stuff from him as always, close in. One of the publicity handouts said that McGee had been hit by sticks in the gym to get him ready for Hatton's body shots. Whether that is just the invention of a publicist, I don't know. It's a good story. He's pretty close in there. Got to be careful when he's in there for cuts. That could be a problem with a good right hand. Oh, and a right too, and he looked a bit wobbled. Hatton on the inside there. Looks a bit wobbly. Left uppercut, and Hatton disorganised. And he's good at picking the shots. McGee, Hatton's in trouble and needs to hold on in a daze here. Anxious looks on the faces of his parents at ringside. One of the big crises in Hatton's career, maybe the biggest. I think McGee had him in a real daze for a few seconds there. Yep, he definitely did with a big right hand. Took a lot out of Hatton. His head's clearing. Good left hook from Hatton. Just the fight we thought we would see. Hatton pressure, pressure, pressure. But the danger of the counter shots of Eamon McGee. The man who's given up the Commonwealth title for this fight to concentrate on this big mission with Hatton. Hatton trying to find the angles for the body shots in there. But that's where he can leave himself open. Very good left hook to the body. We thought McGee didn't like the body shots much when he fought John Thaxton in his last fight, even though McGee won that impressively in the end. So far, he's coping with Hatton's attempted onslaught. There's a lover cut from Hatton, but the, the right hook was coming back from McGee. This terrific action. Successes. More for Eamon McGee really early. You try too hard then, right? You try too hard, you try too hard to impress. There's still dangerous stuff coming back. Do you hear me? Come on. 
I'm claiming right away. Shook Nick it again. Williamson, who's been hiding in recent times because of his expert work with cuts, which was a problem many times for Hatton, but he's got five fights without getting a cut. This is the incident here now. Big right hand there. That was the one that took it out of him. He tries to fall in Hatton to let his head clear. Mickey Van almost intervened there at a, at a key moment, but it was a really good right hook from McGee. Look at that, oh. right on the chin. Hatton's hands down again. And he's finding the holes in the defence of Hatton. Well, we said this was the litmus test, the barometer tonight of Hatton. And many times we've mentioned about him getting hit too much and maybe paying the penalty when he moved up in class. And that's happened, and there's another right hand. We thought it would be the McGee left that would be the problem, but they've been working, haven't they, on this right hand? Because Hatton does leave his left glove low. It's low now. Yep, always... You know, that's the shot that we've said Hatton has been open to. McGee with a south force stance, teeing off with that counter punch very well. But Hatton will still believe he can break down Eamon McGee. Well, good fighters come through bad spells, good fighters go down, get up and win. This is what Hatton's got to try and do. But being a little more circumspect, notably, Hatton here. I think the answer for him is in and out, isn't it? Not hang around too long in there. Yeah, he's trying a bit too hard early on. He's got a point to prove. Billy Graham's told him, you know, just hang off a little bit, take your time. Now that's a bit better from Hatton. He said he might have some problems early. He's watched a lot of videos of McGee. He said he really couldn't see that much, really, to lose sleep over. He might have to reassess that. Right hand was a good shot from Hatton. McGee has always had very good resilience. Hatton number three with the WBC and McGee number four. More realistically, eight and 17 on the independent rankings. Still McGee waits for Hatton to come in. Hatton duly obliges. There's another little counter from McGee, but he's still caught by that left of the body. It seemed to go around the back. It shouldn't be a scoring punch. Hatton's having to use his boxing brain a little here. He's going to have to do more than just charge in. And we're seeing in and out tactics. This is a bit smarter from Hatton. Change of ploy. Well, it's the mark of a good fighter to come back like this. He's doing well, getting a nice rhythm, more thoughtful work from Hatton now. It was noticeable McGee waved him in there. A sign maybe that McGee is less happy with what Hatton is doing now because he's giving him less chance to go for the counters. There he goes for that big right again. Hatton's got to watch it. He could be taken out with one of these. He really could. There are danger signals flashing. He must not be too gung-ho, Hatton, otherwise he could pay a very, very big price. Welcome back to a packed MEN arena in Manchester. In a tumultuous atmosphere here for one of the big domestic showdowns of recent years. McGee must be happy with the way things are going, though I think he was outworked in that last round. Yeah, I think he, he just waited a bit too long. That's something he can't afford to do. He's got to keep a good work rate up, but he is a counter-puncher. Four. This is one of the favourite rounds of Hatton for finishing his fight, so he'll do well to finish off this fella at any time. A more circumspect Ricky Hatton. More head movement from him there. But always the danger that he's going to be tacked by a right hand again. It would be a massive blow to this huge crowd here in Manchester, who have really got behind Hatton, who's cut. He's got a cut. There's blood around there. Trying to see how bad that is. That'll lift McGee as they work in close. A good uppercut on the inside from the Irishman. 
See, Hatton doesn't really want to be in there. That's no good for him. You know, the heads come together. He can't get his work going properly. It's so often the way you get a cut for a clash of heads when you get an orthodox fighter on a southpaw. You thought it would happen, didn't you, Glenn? Yep, it, it, it's always the case. You know, both lead arms are together. Heads often clash in. Having said that, Hatton is used to the problem. And he's got a very good cut man in the corner. He had to fight virtually the whole fight when he won the British title against John Thaxton with a terrible, terrible cut. Gets him with a body shot. Was McGee a little more troubled than he has been so far by one of those? It seemed that way. We think that a punch caused the cut. Yep, I think it was that long left hand that did it. McGee so sharp when Hatton tries to come in. Hatton's really having to think here. McGee's strategy based on fast, hard counter-punching. And it's setting Ricky Hatton huge problems. If you could devise a style, really, to beat Hatton, probably this would be it. Well, McGee isn't moving a lot, so he can stand there, he can set his legs, he can get power in his punches. sharp left but Hatton comes back good right hand to the head from him but that eye is getting noticeably worse Ian and that was a good left hand to the eye there's that left hook to the body and the right hand to the head again from Hatton Mickey Van steps in we've got a timeout worried about too much coaching from the corner by the look of it from McGee's people come on in again says McGee I love this I love counter punching well he does look pretty happy where he's at right in his own corner and he's going for huge haymakers one of these lands I think Ricky Hatton is gonna land out in Manchester Piccadilly station but he's catching good shots McGee he's managing to come out with these counters that are landing and that was McGee's round for me Being too eager, Ricky. Being too eager, taking too many chances. Does he feel like he's wilting the touch yet? Is he weak in the touch yet? I think it's a harder fight, I think, than Ricky Hatton imagined it was going to be. Yep, I think it is. He's been very casual about it. He thinks McGee's one dimensional. He's finding out he's got a, a little bit more to him and McGee than just that. He can do a lot of things, but what he's doing is he's fighting his fight. Definitely a punch that caused the cut. That's the one we think did it, that little right hand there. Doesn't look too bad, does it? No, it's in a, it's not in a bad place, it's under the eye, but the eye's swelling a little bit. Well, Paxton was saying, everyone says my style suits him, that's rubbish, but I'm afraid it isn't. Fifth round. Clever performance so far by Eamon McGee. Can he sustain it? The hand speed is troubling Hatton. His defence isn't quite tight enough as well. Well, he's having to lead off, isn't he, Hatton? He's having to come forward. McGee, you know, he's controlling it in his own mind. He's getting Hatton to do what he wants Hatton to do. That body shot did have an effect on McGee, who breathed quite heavily as he came off the ropes. But he's not getting in as many of those kind of shots than he normally does happen tonight. Undoubtedly, this is the hardest test of his career. We thought it would be. Now, can he find a way to prevail? Or will McGee, as he promised, cause the upset? and burst the bubble. Just pulling him onto the punches that were warning for McGee. McGee having a, an almost an argument with Mickey Van on that corner there. Body shots, good ones from Hatton. Just seemed to want to buy a little time for a moment there, didn't he, McGee? 
but all the time he's thinking and calculating and waiting for the counter. Just like a cunning fox. He's setting a trap and almost saying to Hatton, come on in and see what happens. Oh, that's better from Hatton. Vicious looking left hook into the side of the head of McGee. Yep, that was a nice clean shot, some short chopping shots from Hatton. This is better work from Hatton, McGee's not getting off. A bit more pressure. I think if Hatton thinks if he can get in close enough and really lay on him, he'll deny McGee leverage for any counters. Good idea, Glenn. Well, it's working at this point, but he's also denying himself the room to get his shots on and also making it easier to get cut with the heads. But I think he figured he had to start getting in with some shots to start making a dent in McGee for the long-term plan of breaking him down. And he's thinking all the time, Hatton, and looking to get away again. He does not want to stay around in there too long. Nice body shot with the right hand from Hatton. A little bit more success in this, in this round. A compelling strategic battle between these two, exciting too. So we are watching a very, very absorbing fight here. Ricky Hatton has landed 36 punches to seven to the body, but that does not begin to tell the story of this fight. No, it doesn't at all. There's some little shots inside, landing to the body, some good ones as well from Hatton, but the, the good solid shots and the, the good work is often coming from McGee. Hatton down for the first time in his pro career in the first round of this fight. Now then, McGee, who was hanging around almost on the same square foot of canvas for round after round, has gone on his bike, and it brought ironic applause from the Manchester fans here. Now that's a sign maybe, though, that McGee is, doesn't want to be taking too many of these body shots from Hatton and feels he needs to try something a bit different. Well, his work with back to the ropes was, was working. It's what he's going to do now. When he moves about, he can't set his feet as much, McGee, so the power will not be there quite as well as it was. There he is going for that right hand again, missing this time. But there are red lights flashing. I think all the time McGee is in this fight, he's dangerous. Raiding tactics by Hatton. Oh, going for it again. I think they think the McGee camp, that Hatton's defence is a bit leaky and they can get lucky with one of these. Yeah, well, they've got to rely on something else and just get lucky. They've got to keep the, the shots going in. He's got to try and catch Hatton with something else. Good work from Hatton there. That one definitely registered on the Richter scale, the body shot. It brought a kind of cynical smile from McGee. There's another one. He just came up for air a little, didn't he, after it landed? McGee. Off balance, more than anything, as the jab caught him. Now Hatton's starting to settle in. This is more like the sort of work he wants. McGee moving is shooting Hatton more, coming forward. Hatton has had to come through crises in rounds one and two. Is he just taking over? There's McGee just waiting his time to land another concussive shot. At the moment, and I stress at the moment, Hatton having the better of the argument. I should think his fans and his family Absolute nervous Rex watching this. Hatton getting into a bit more of a rhythm now. Starting to let more and more shots go and more and more shots score. Now it's McGee who may, has one or two problems. That's another Hatton round. Can't take it through with the other ones, but you're wasting a lot. You've got Welcome to be back to Manchester. 
Billy Graham, the preacher man, as he's called, doing the talking in the corner. Well, Ricky Hatton. Hatton. Hatton starting to make a bit of headway, starting to get through with some better shots, getting a better rhythm, good right hand scoring there, not getting through with a, the hook to the body, but the left hook to the head worked. On it goes, and a great right hand right at the start from Hatton, who seemed to just catch McGee with a counter then, as McGee seemed to give him the charge. Halfway stage, there has Glenn has it, and me too. McGee by a one. Yeah. But Hatton noticeably coming more and more into it here. Boxing a smarter fight, Hatton. When he gets it and lands his punches, he skips away again out of range. What I like about what Hatton's done is he's showing he can think in there as well. And he's going to need that if he's going to fight the world's best. And that world's best is undoubtedly Costa Xu, the Russian-born Australian. He's got to win this first. Yes, he tight. Does. But what he's doing is keeping cool in there, keeping calm, going about his work. Cautionary word for Hatton who's now a bandage has come loose on one of his gloves. Lovely little right hook from him on the inside, too. And that's why we're going to have the interruption, because the bandage has come loose, I think, on both gloves of Hatton. <laughs> well, everybody wants to be at this fight. I noticed Stephen Gerrard, the England footballer, sadly injured England footballer. He should be out in Japan, shouldn't he? What a shame. But uh, he's here at ringside. That's one little bonus for him, watching this fascinating fight. This is only the third time Hatton's had to go this far, by the way, Glenn. Yep, his short left hand from McGee, who's back in that corner, looking for the counters to try and draw Hatton in. He loves that bit of canvas, doesn't he? Just by his own corner. Yep, he knows it's um, a good place. He can set his feet there, wait for Hatton coming in. Probably also get a little bit of information from the corner as well as to how things are going. Oh, big body shot from Hatton that time. Bit by bit by bit, he's looking to knock the spirit and the fight and the defiance and the feistiness out of Eamon McGee. Nice long right hand from Hatton coming in, starting to pick off McGee from long range. Just outboxing him a little, isn't he, at the moment? He's showing that he's more than just a rampaging body puncher. He's showing that he can think and he can box a bit too. Which is not to say that McGee might suddenly come up with an equalising punch. That could happen too. But the body punches are starting to have an effect. Just nods a little bit there, McGee. Another hand round. Well, let's have a look at what the computer is saying okay. here about uh, punches landed in this fight so far. Hatton 144, McGee 102. Big advantage, really, for the home fighter. Yeah, look at the body, 50. For Hatton, 11 for McGee, so he's certainly winning the war there, as we thought he would. But on the scorecards, I have it level. Exactly the same as me, Ian. Eighth round. Has McGee just run out of ideas? Just one powder keg counter is all it might take for Eamon McGee. He knows it, and Hatton knows it too now. Well, he's took a couple of powder keg shots, Hatton, and he's got through that. So he's shown his, his chin's pretty good. Passing that little test, too. It's an overused phrase these days in boxing, but this is some sort of defining fight for Hatton. Skipping out of range quite nicely, and just setting McGee 
one or two problems. McGee's on his bike now. McGee does have quiet periods in fights where it happened, didn't it, with Shane Neary? One or two other fights too, where he just seemed to fight in fits and spurts, but he really has to keep matching Hatton's work rate. Well, that's what Hatton's good at. He keeps going all the time. Nice rhythm. But he's always got to be careful of that counter. Nice little right hand from Hatton, who's benefited since his last fight. He fought a hectic schedule uh, by taking a Caribbean cruise. That's freshened him up. He says no end. Waiting for the counters, McGee, but he's not getting them off. Probably the most ragged round of the fight, this one, so far. Patton missing a lot, close in. He's had a rather more respectful look about McGee. He's just nodded at Hatton once or twice when combinations had landed earlier on in the fight. As pros do to each other. Shown another side of his boxing character tonight, Ricky Hatton. Good shot. Got in from Hatton with the right. Well, he did have to show in this fight that he's ready for the next level, and so far he's doing that. Now, what more can McGee produce? Trying to turn the tables on Hatton here and pin him against the ropes. Don't see that very often. Well, boxing clever, Hatton. He missed a lot that round, but I think he still won it on pressure. Each time, you do better when you're making throw three punches. I've given Hatton the last one, two, three, four now. Nine's coming up. Yep, me too. And for the, the first time in the fight, I've got Hatton ahead. But it's still yeah, tight. He's not doing, he's not doing that much Hatton, by the way, is number one with the WBO, number three with the WBC, number five with the WBA. But I don't think he's convinced everyone on the other side of the pond yet. Uh, as we look at the, uh, he's still landing more shots. You see, I saw, a, I saw a computer printout this week of the fight writers in America. They don't have him in the top ten. He hasn't convinced them yet. I think he's still got to beat one of the top Americans to do that. Yeah, I that, that, that's definitely you. Yeah, he's got to, you know, people like this to get out the way first, and then there's that step up to the, the top Americans, and I think that, you know, that's obviously next on the agenda if he gets through this. Round nine. This is the round in which Hatton won his last fight uh, against the Siberian Krivolopov, whose first name at this moment escapes me. Hatton been, and McGee rather has been biding his time to come up with a big finish. Well, Hatton did say that McGee was one-dimensional. He's got to prove otherwise now, McGee, because there's not much else coming from him. Always hurt by these shots a little, takes a little break, or was he? Because he comes out of it and just shrugs. What a great chin, isn't he? And McGee, yes. he talks to Hatton now. He's a tough guy, isn't he? Yeah. Trying to go Hatton to do something silly. That's when he'll look to get him with a counter. In troubled background on the streets of Belfast when he was a, a youngster from the Ardoin area. So he only had to go down the corner to have a fight. Hard times. He was once stabbed in the neck. Read him tough. Good left hand from McGee went in there. Still just waiting for the, the opening. I think Hatton has settled really for doing this on points if he has to. And if the knockout or stoppage comes, it comes. I think that's his mental set now. Well, he'll always be looking for it, I think. It's the nature of Hatton. done a good job in Hatton's corner on his cut which is below the eye it's been no problem at all to him really since it happened just a bit of swelling underneath the left eye but nothing much for Eamon McGee who seems to have this teak tough skin 
That's a right hand on the way in there. Hatton just getting caught. He hasn't been making that mistake so much in more recent times in the fight. And he's getting through more and more. Hatton, McGee not having uh, the one-punch success that he had in the, the first couple of rounds. But they're holding on the inside from Eamon McGee. Everybody's glued to this in here, almost sort of on the edge of their seats. There's a kind of crackling tension about it. Again, pretty smart boxing skills from Hatton. He's shown that he can box as well as blast tonight and think, which is very important. He switched strategies after the first two rounds. He's been a lot cuter since, and he's been putting rounds in the bank. Let's get some uh, alternative views of the action over to Adam Smith, who's got some guests with him. Thanks, Ian. Nicky, after uh, a very early scare, when he really was in trouble at the beginning, do you think Hatton's come back well? Yeah, I think he has come back well. Eamon McGee, I think, has got the ability to win this fight. He's just not doing enough work. He's making Hatton miss, and then he's not counter-punching Hatton, though, to his credit. What a fighter, you know, and uh, I've given him a share of the last round. McGee did a bit better, but apart from the first two, Hatton's won every round for me. He's just doing more work than McGee. He seems to be switching off Eamon McGee. He, he looked at the beginning like he had the speed and the counter punches to really win this fight. Well, it was a disastrous start for Ricky Hatton. Eamon McGee, he, he has got the ability to win this contest, but he's not doing enough work. He's lying on the ropes. Hatton's coming in with his hands carried quite low, and so there's always that chance that um, McGee gets caught again or catches him again. Who's, who's winning? I fancy um, Amy McGee's two rounds. Hatton's winning. Thanks, guys. Tenth round. I've got it to Hatton by two points at this point. Nine minutes left in the contest. I wonder if McGee thinks he's winning the fight. Well, I've got 86, 84, same as you, I think, Ian, in Hatton's favour. Well, he might think he's doing the cuter work on the back foot in the corner, but you know, it, it certainly didn't look that way. Hands on his run for making a fight of it. Ricky Van reads the riot act to McGee. The cut just starts to seep blood again for Hatton. I don't think it's a big problem for him. The cut is below the eye. It will not. Uh, have the blood running into the eye and obscure the vision for him. Oh, good left-hand counter from McGee. His corner have been beseeching him. Well, his brother did anyway. Comes from a boxing family. One of his brothers was a Commonwealth champion too. They've been screaming at him. Up the work rate, Eamon. I think that's right, isn't it? Well, he can't expect any favours, really. He's in Manchester. That is the harsh reality of boxing life. You're fox fighting in the other fella's backyard. If it's a bit close, realistically, you're not going to get it. 19 times out of 20, anyway. He knows that. Little left hand counter from McGee, quite cute. He needs a bit more of that. And a good right hand back from Hatton, straight after that, Ian. A bit more from McGee in this round. He has stepped up his work rate, and he's not laying on the ropes or staying in that same piece of canvas. His left hand from McGee. Hatton still tries to close the, the distance down. Trying to give Hatton a few more angles and make him think. Maybe he thinks out here that might be more prone to making an error and leaving himself open for one of those dynamic rights or haven't really seen much of it so far. The left too, which was the punch that did for John Thaxton, common opponent of these two. McGee stopped him in six. He took Hatton the distance. He's in the left hand from Hatton. McGee just smiles and shakes his head. 
just lost a bit of snap, Hatton's work, in the last couple of rounds for me. Good boy. That's better. Actually, John Green That's in the corner is handling some good fighters, including Dave Boy McCauley. You might remember him, the top flyweight. Bernardo Chaker on the cuts tonight, because Danny Mancini is usually there, is in, um, is in Germany. I think he nicked that round, didn't he, McGee? I think he did. It was good movement from him, picked his shots, just upset the rhythm of Hatton. He did something different. Hatton used to just rolling forward, pinning him on the ropes and letting the shots go. All of a sudden, that round, McGee had something different, kept on the move and picked some nice shots out from long range. This is only the second time that Hatton scored a southpaw in his pro career. The other one was Dylan Carew, but uh, he must have fought a few in the amateurs, I guess. Not the same thing, though, is it? Well, he'll have done plenty sparring with him. It's, it's not, it's different, it's always hard with southpaws. Six minutes to go, and close, I would think, on most cards. It is on the cards of Glen Arai after that great start for McGee when Hatton was down and then dazed in the next round, the second. Just a bit of the fizz gone out of Hatton's work for a moment. Can he get back to work? I suppose there'll be those who will say, and maybe right, that McGee has shown up the limitations of Ricky Hatton tonight. Is that a fair criticism, Glenn? Well, I, no, I don't think so. I think this was always going to be a tough fight because of the characters. You know, McGee is a good fighter. You know, let's not take anything away from McGee. You know, he's proven himself as well. Yeah. This begins to look, doesn't it, as if it's definitely going to the cards. So I think work rate for these two now is crucial. And we have seen some funny old scoring in some WBU fights in recent times. Without wishing to get on their case too much. There's a decent body shot from Hatton there starting to work. From McGee on the ropes better from Hatton. Just mustn't be too gung-ho and he knows it. Ricky Hatton. And I think by and large he's found the answers quite well. It's a thinking display. McGee's been pretty cute himself, mind you. Well, a good right hooks for McGee catching Hatton on the way in. He's moving quite well, McGee, and just looking for the counter still. Good right hand on the inside, but didn't McGee turn him cleverly? Yeah, at the turned end him, of it. Turned him quite Ian, but wasted that opportunity. Back in that same spot again. I remember seeing a great fight between Azuma Nelson and Jeff Fennec, and it was almost put out on the same square inch of canvas. I should think about 60% of the action's gone on in that little part of the ring. Yep, McGee being very keen on his, his home little bit of turf there in the corner. Come on in, says McGee, and shouts across the ring at Hatton, who's not having any of it. I think Hatton settled a long time ago for the fact that he's in with a knowing, durable fighter and that points will get the job done. And I think that is absolutely top-notch thinking. Yep, I think he realised that 204 to 152 punches landed, so pulling away in that department, Ricky Hatton. I wonder what McGee thinks the scorecard is in his head. Uh, they've, uh, they've, they've been scheduled to box a lot of 12 rounders, a pair of them. How often have they actually have to go the distance? Hatton only once, because he's usually finished everybody off in schedule, and McGee uh, three times. Glenn Scorecard has Hatton by two points, and having exactly the same for what it's worth. Crowd have enjoyed it here.
Well, it's been an intriguing encounter, hasn't it? They touch gloves and nod to each other. Always the mutual respect at the end, nearly always, between fighters, no matter what's gone on in the build-up. And these two actually have been pretty respectful of each other in the build-up too. They know that the other is a good fighter and it's a win worth having. But it may be close enough for an argument on some people's reading, I don't know, but I, I've got Hatton by a couple going into this last. Yeah, exactly, same as me, and I think Hatton's just looked to, to force it, looked to, to be busier, and I think, you know, probably has. He's trying to be cute, McGee, but it's all about work rate, and that, at this minute, hasn't quite done enough. He probably is thinking that too, and he'll be looking now for a knockout punch to take Hatton out of it. Is there going to be late drama, just as there was early drama? in this contest don't rule it out well, there nice they are again back in that phone booth in the corner some nice work from mcgee in that corner he's just getting the better of it in there didn't really land with his jabs and he's got very very circumspect about getting in close well, I think he's felt the sharpness and the power of McGee a few times. And McGee's proved tonight that wherever Ricky Hatton is in the light welterweight pyramid, he isn't far behind. He hasn't had the publicity lower for him. He just sort of slipped against those ropes more than anything. I think the crowd at the back of the hall thought he was dazed. He wasn't. McGee's getting the better of this last round. His punches are sharper. Yep, he's more accurate, isn't he? Hatton just standing off. As you said, a little more circumspect. And he's almost in an adjacent poster district at times. Hatton in this last run. I don't know if he thinks he's got it in the bag. Oh, he just seemed to lose his uh, orientation for a moment there. Yeah, I think it's because he's hurting. I think that's why yeah. he's standing off. He hasn't quite got it there, Hatton. A tough, hard fight, easily the hardest this of Hatton's career. He's been asked plenty of questions. And it's close-ish, all right. Well, everybody thought this would be an interesting battle. It's proved more than interesting. McGee again looking for the thunderbolt the bolt from belfast final bow it goes to the judges the two of them embrace at the end of it all well they lift up mcgee and he starts the celebration this is of course part of the phony war you see both of them claiming the win i think mcgee might have just nicked the last round and maybe there's only a point in it in favor of hatton but uh, there's no telling how the three judges will see it We've got Des Boyd of Australia, Glenn Falcon of the USA, and Howard Goldberg of South Africa scoring the fight. But I think in a close fight, um, there's Ray Hatton, who used to play for Manchester City in the uh, summer of the Bell era. Here, he was a right back, and Mum Carroll. Don't know how they bear to watch it. He must have died a thousand deaths in the first two rounds. 218 landed by Hatton, 171 by McGee. It doesn't really tell the story, does it? McGee asks us what we thought of the fight, how close we'd got it. Glenn intimates he thought Hatton won it by one point. At least you were honest, Glenn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll stand my corner. There it is, 114, 113 on my card. Very, very close. A lot of the rounds were open to interpretation. Yep. When McGee had some good work in that corner, it was close. Kiss for mum and dad for Ricky, who's never happier than when he's around his family and his young son. And little James Powers is there at all his fights. He's kind of adopted him, Ricky. There's the three judges who will score this. And uh, we have learned not to take anything at all for granted. Both Glenn and I think 
this is a close fight. Close enough, maybe, for McGee to be claiming a win. He had a great start and a useful finish, but generally Hatton had the better of it in the middle rounds. Yes? Here he comes now. Here we go. Michael Pass, the MC, to announce it for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the judges' scorecards. They are as follows. Judge Des Bloyd of Australia scores the contest 116 to 111. <laughs> Judge Glenn Feldman of the United States of America scores the contest also 116 to 111. <laughs> and Judge Howard Goldberg of South Africa scores the contest 115 to 112. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still the WBU like welterweight champion of the world, Manchester's very own Ricky the Hitman Hatton. He's got it, Ricky Hatton. Bit lopsided, thought it might be, with the uh, the way things are with him being at home. Five points was too much on two of the cards for me. Three points on the other one. Glenn and I thought it was only by one point that Hatton got home by. Final verdict, Glenn, and what will America think? Well, uh, you know, they think he's a thing in fight. They might not be that impressed, but he showed you know, he could get hurt in the first round and come back and win the fight. And that, that shows somebody who can think, who can box, who can change tags. And I think overall, he got a very tough opponent out of the way. Well, they're pretty hard to please, the Americans, and they may say, well, who was Eamon McGee? And he made hard work of Eamon McGee. Well, I'll tell you who Eamon McGee is. He's a very good fighter. He proved it tonight, and Hatton just squeezed by him to keep his unbeaten record to move to 29 and 0. He is the future. Barry, how did you see it? I had it for Hatton by three rounds. It was a very close fight. He had to show another dimension to him. He was adaptable. He showed that he could box and fight, and I thought he was very impressive. Good performance, but uh, he showed glaring defensive mistakes. Let's hear from Jim in just a moment or two. Ricky's waiting to speak to us. With Adam. Unbeaten in 29 fights now. It was the uh, first acid test of your career, and it uh, turned out that way, didn't it? Yeah, um... Full respect to Eamon McGee, it was, it was as hard a fight as, you know, I thought it was. He took the body shots well, he took the head shots well, he was um, spinning off the ropes, he was quite hard to nail, you know. I wasn't really impressed with myself, I think I was too overconfident in knocking Eamon out early, but I think this is the, the most beneficial fight for my career because I show, you know, Eamon's the counter puncher, Eamon's the boxer, and I felt I outboxed him at times. It was an absolutely nightmarish start for you, down for the first time in your career, and wobbled as well in the second round. How did that feel? Um, yeah, it's the first time I've been down in my career. I thought it was, um, hit me on the top of the head, and it didn't, um, it didn't shake me. I honestly can swear on my life, it didn't shake me, but I got up, and when Eamon gets you going, he puts clusters together, and it was quite hard. I was trying to stay close to him, smother his work. You know, and that's what I did, but it was a cracking shot. I mean, was just waiting for me like, he, like I knew he would. But honestly, on my life, it, did, it didn't shake me up. It was just Eamon throws that many punches when he's got you going. You've just got to, you know. It was catching you with uh, right-hand counters and uh, probably didn't do enough to win the fight. But uh, do you still think you're as good as uh, you thought you were beforehand? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I've been having everything my own way in my career. And, you know, he was a big puncher. I've only fought, fought one southpaw as a pro. You know, so um, although I fought plenty as an amateur, you know, I, you know, I thought that you know, with all the good southpaw sparring I'd have, it wouldn't be a problem. But I mean, I mean, let's have it right. All the top lads in the division are southpaws, you know, and I've only fought one. So um, yeah, I mean, I'll be better for it. You know, I didn't feel like I was ever going to lose the fight. You know, except for that punch in the first round. What's well, where to? It didn't shake me. You know. Great to watch. Well done, Ricky. You go on from here. Thank right. you very much.